If you're an advanced guitar player, or at least someone who wants to become an advanced guitarist, this video might be one of the most important things I can teach you. Why? Because it will help you to answer for yourself almost every technique question you will ever have. And if you teach guitar, this video will help you become a better guitar teacher immediately. That means by the end of this video, your ability to teach people to learn and master guitar technique on an advanced level will go through the roof. Hi, I'm Tom Hess, and I've taught thousands of students over the last 30 years. If you have ever taught guitar yourself, you've surely answered many of the same guitar technique questions thousands of times. Students ask everything from how do you hold the pick correctly to how do you position the left hand thumb on the neck to where does the picking motion come from? Uh, should they position their fretting hand fingers this way or this way or any other possible way? And the list goes on endlessly. And that's okay to ask questions. But if you simply give them an answer like this, hold your pick this way, put your fretting hand thumb here, the picking motions ought to be like this. The fretting hand finger number four should be bent like that. If you simply tell the students what to do, or when I tell my students what to do, if I just tell them, do this, do this, do this, do this, that creates a new set of problems. What sort of problems? Well, students don't really learn anything about mastering the guitar. They just learn something about a particular technique. They can copy what you say, but they don't know how to think about guitar technique so that they can become an advanced guitar player. Now, a very good student of mine recently asked me a pretty advanced question about his fretting hand thumb position. Now, this lesson isn't about fretting hand thumb position. It's about how I answer this question in a way that will help him to figure out most technique related questions on his own. So let me tell you a little story. The student who asked me the question about his fretting hand thumb asked me a tactical question. In other words, he was asking about the tactic of what he should do with his thumb in a particular guitar playing situation. Now what I did, instead of telling him the answer, which of course I know the answer, but instead of giving him that answer, I gave him something much bigger, much better. I'm gonna share that with you. So the first thing that I said was that in order to answer his question about where the thumb should be positioned and how, you have to be thinking about what that tactic, the thumb's position, relates to. And it relates to a larger strategy of technique called open hand, having your hand open. So as you know, when you play guitar, or you should know, when your fingers are curled like this, it's very difficult to play guitar fluently or fast or with ease or with consistency. It's possible to play like this. It's just not easy to play like that. So the principle here, or the strategy, I should say, not the principle, the strategy here is that when you're playing guitar, in most situations, you want your hand to be open. Okay, so what does an open hand have to do with the thumb? Well, in my response to the student, I said, as long as the hand is open, the thumb placement, whether it's here or here or here or here, is less important. The goal here is to use the strategy of open hand. But it doesn't stop there. Because when you think about the open hand strategy, there are other things you have to think about besides just the position of the thumb. There are many other elements which we're not gonna get into right now because they're not important to the purpose of this lesson. But the point is this, many things go into making the hand open, okay? Now, why do we want an open hand? We want an open hand because there's a higher level, the principle that we're really trying to adhere to here with our guitar technique generally is efficiency. So when you're playing anything technically, you always want to have the maximum efficiency that is practical. Notice I did not say possible. I did not say the maximum efficiency possible. I said the maximum efficiency practical for the particular technique that you're executing, for the particular thing that you're playing, 
okay? So efficiency is the, the big overarching principle. Having an open hand is one of the strategies we use to achieve maximum practical efficiency. And the position of the thumb is at the tactical level at the bottom. That is one of the little components or tactics to having an open hand, which leads us to more efficiency when we play. Now the position of the thumb is not determined only by the strategy of keeping your hand open. That is one consideration. So we may use other strategies that relate to efficiency to help us know where and when to position our thumb. So one of those other things is called economy of motion. Economy of motion is a strategy that goes beneath the efficiency uh, principle. Okay, efficiency is the principle. Open hand is one strategy, economy of motion is another strategy, and the position of the thumb relates to economy of motion. In, in, in other words, keeping the thumb in a place where the other fingers can move efficient, efficiently, where the economy of motion is at its maximum practical uh, economy. Okay. Now there are other things, of course, that relate to economy of motion besides just the position of the thumb. The thumb position is just one of many different tactics or elements that go that make up the idea or the strategy of economy of motion. And we use economy of motion in combination with the open hand because those two different strategies contribute to the maximum practical efficiency that we are going for when we're trying to ask questions or solve technical problems and know where to put our hands, where the motions come from, what we do with our picking hand, all of those sorts of things. But we're still not done looking at where the fretting hand thumb should be positioned because its position relates not only to the open hand strategy, not only to economy of motion strategy, but also to tension. Playing guitar with the least amount of tension possible in order to execute what we are playing in an economical way, in an efficient way, and with good articulation, phrasing, and tone. Okay? So again, the position of the fretting hand thumb is going to be influenced partly by the strategy of tension. We don't want to play with excessive, unnecessary tension. Now again, the fretting hand thumb is not the only piece, the only tactic or the only element that goes into tension. There are many more, uh, but the thumb of the fretting hand is one of them. And tension, of course, relates to efficiency. So we have the open hand, open fretting hand, that relates to efficiency of the fretting hand. The economy of motion definitely is a strategy to implement the principle of efficiency, and so is tension. Because if you are playing with excessive tension, you are not going to be as efficient because your muscles in your fingers and your hands won't fire efficiently, efficiently when they're tense. Okay, so here, here's the way I want you to think about this. If you're teaching guitar or if you're a student of guitar, when you ask yourself, how should something be? How should I hold the pick? How should I hold the hand? Where should the motions come from? How do I synchronize my hand? Where does my little finger go? Should it be arched? Should it be curled? Where should it be positioned? What about the knuckle line for the fretting hand? All of those kinds of technical questions and many, 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 many more. If you think about what is the big goal, the big principle here, and in this example, one of the principles is efficiency. It's not the only one, but it is one of them, efficiency. Okay, and then you ask, what are all of the strategies on the strategic level that go into making your fretting hand very efficient? Well, economy of motion is one. Having an open hand is another one. Not playing with excessive tension is another one. There are additional ones, but this is, the, this is an example here, a template for you to think about. This is not a lesson on efficiency. It's a lesson on how to answer, how to think about technical questions. The first thing you have to do is you have to ask yourself, at what level is my question? 
So when a student asks me a question, the first thing that goes to my mind is, what level is the student's question on? Is this a tactical question? Is this a strategic question? Or is this a question about the principle? In this case, efficiency. Simply laying out in your mind where the question lies, at what level, will help you then to, in your mind, build this little framework that you see on the screen to help you know what are the components involved to answer the question, solve the technique, overcome the problem, and play well. Okay, so that's how I think when students ask me questions, this is what's going on in my mind. I'm laying this out in this sort of hierarchy format and asking what's all involved, what attaches to what, what is the big goal here? Then and only then do I think about answering a tactical question, okay? Now, if, if you're teaching guitar, you might be thinking, well, that all sounds good, but man, that's gonna take a long time if you're not used to this, it will take a while. To sort of lay this stuff out in your mind, um, you may not have this off the top of your head. If someone asks you, uh, how should you hold the pick? Well, you could pick up your guitar pick and show him, hold it like this, but that doesn't really teach him anything. It just gets him to copy what you're doing. And assuming that you're doing it well, or doing it correctly, then great. Then the student has a technique to copy, but he doesn't know why he's holding it that way. He doesn't really get it. He's just copying whatever you say because you said it. Okay, now that's better than nothing. It's better than holding the pick the wrong way or a bad way but it doesn't really help them to know why this way is better than all of the alternatives. Or, in some cases, there may be more than one right way. So there may be three ways that are different, but they're approximately equal in terms of their pros and cons or, or their, their efficiency, effectiveness, etc. But there are always going to be many other ways in which they could hold the pick or hold their thumb that are going to be less efficient, less effective, not sound as good, create tension, create problems, create... There's always going to be lots of other ones that are not as effective. So sometimes there is one and only one most effective or most efficient way to do things. Most of the time there will be more than one right way, not all the time, but sometimes, but there will only usually be a handful, two, three, four, maybe. There's not going to be a thousand where all different ways of holding the pick or holding your thumb are equal. They're not, obviously, and we can show and prove that they're not. And I'm sure you can too if you think a little bit about it, if you haven't already. So the point here is, if you're the one asking the question for yourself, if you ask me or if you ask your, some other guitar teacher or whatever, before you ask the question, hey, how do you do this? How do I hold my hands? Should I do it this way or this way? Think about what level your question is at. Is it a question of principle, a question of strategy, or a question of tactic? If you think about that before you ask the question, you will understand the answer better. You'll also be able to evaluate the answer better. See, without that information, if you ask someone and they give you an answer, how do you really know if that answer is valid or correct or have any worth at all? you don't have a good way to evaluate this. So you can guess, or you can go ask someone else for their opinion, and maybe they have a different opinion, but you don't really know yourself. If you start thinking this way, as you see on the screen, things plotted out, it's much easier for you to either see the answer, or at least put the answer in context and it becomes easier for you to evaluate. Does this guitar teacher know what he's really talking about? Or is he just teaching it this way because that's the way he learned it and he really can't even break it down and explain it to you? Sometimes it's that way. Okay, well, you would want to know that. Okay, you would want to know how deep is this person's knowledge really go? The question isn't how good of a player is he? The question is, does he know why he suggests what he does, and can he break this down? Is he even thinking this way? So if you think that way, you'll be able to evaluate better. Now, if you're teaching guitar, when you think in this way, or a, a similar way, this is not the only way to think of things, but it certainly is an effective one, and it's the main one that I use, is that you will be able to see a couple of things. Number one, it'll help you 
to know and understand how principles, strategies, and tactics are integrated together. That's extremely valuable as a teacher. And two, it will tell you what level the student is thinking about because you will start to pick up and recognize when the student is asking a tactical question without any regard to inquiring about what its corresponding strategy or principle is, or if he's asking a strategic question or a principle question, it'll, it'll give you insight into what he's thinking about, at what level the question is, and how far he is thinking about that particular topic. I don't mean to imply that if someone asks you a tactical question, they're dumb, and if someone asks you a principle question, they're really smart. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I mean at all. I just mean it shows you where their head is at when they ask the question, and that will help you help them better. So whether you're the teacher or the student, I think that what I'm sharing with you today can be very, very, very valuable to you um, because it will help you to come to sound, good, logical, rational, effective answers to questions that you have for yourself or that other people have when they ask you. So in the beginning of this video, I said, if you are an advanced guitar player or you want to become one, this is gonna be one of the most important lessons I can probably ever teach you, and I really do believe that. So I don't have a guitar in my hand. I'm not showing you any licks as usual or anything. There's nothing to demonstrate here. It's just about how to think about guitar technique. And of course, this principle can apply far beyond guitar technique. It can apply to all kinds of other aspects of music. So learning and mastering guitar technique will become easier when you think in this way, principle, strategy, tactics, and you lay it out. All right. So I'm hoping that this guitar technique lesson will help you to solve whatever guitar technique problems or challenges you might have in order to become an advanced guitar player um, it, 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 it's helped me a lot as a student when I was learning, and it helped me even more as a teacher when I'm teaching others. And I'm sure if you apply this, it will help you in a very big way. If you like my videos on YouTube, you will love my personalized breakthrough guitar lessons. I'm gonna show you exactly how to transform your guitar playing from just being okay to being really awesome, even if you're feeling stuck right now or if you have self-doubts, and a lot of people do. Imagine how much better your guitar playing will become when you know exactly what to do, exactly how to practice, and you get the guidance and roadmap to get there. Now, I've done this for thousands of people over many years. If you do the work, if you practice at least 30 minutes a day every day, I am absolutely certain you can become the guitar player you want to be. Now, listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't have magic powers. I don't have a magic wand. I don't have fairy dust. I can't sprinkle fairy dust on you, okay, and make you a great player. The only way it's gonna happen, if we do lessons together, you're gonna have to follow what I tell you to do. If you don't wanna do that, you don't think you can do that, you're not willing to do that, I can't help you, okay? I can't and neither can anybody else, really, okay? But if you're willing to put in the time at least a half an hour a day, I'm absolutely sure we can get you there, okay? This is not cookie cutter lessons where everybody gets the same stuff. This, these are lessons customized to you, to who you are, what your goals are, your challenges, your strengths, your weaknesses, your learning style, experience, frustrations, and most importantly, who you want to become. So check out my Breakthrough Guitar Lessons and see if they're right for you. See you on the other side.